Welcome to the All Ball Show, presented by Abstract Sports, where we bring sports back to life. I'm your host, Kyle Clay 2K. In the All Ball Show, we focus on basketball-only content. And to tip things off, I'm covering every single team in the NBA, from worst to best in each conference. I'm going to look at their rosters and discuss how I think they're going to perform this upcoming season. Let's get things going with the number 10 seed from the Eastern Conference last season, the Charlotte Hornets. The Charlotte Hornets are an American professional basketball team based in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Hornets compete in the National Basketball Association as a member of the league's Eastern Conference Southeast Division. Their head coach is James Borrego. Uh, They play at the Spectrum Center. Their owner is the man himself, Michael Jordan. General manager is Mitch Kupchak. So this is a team that's kind of been around a little bit. There's a couple teams that I'm a little confused about and where they were before and where they ended up. But there was the Charlotte Bobcats for a while. A very, very terrible team in the NBA. And the Charlotte Hornets were there before they were the Charlotte Bobcats, and now they're the Charlotte Hornets again. They went back to their old branding, kind of gave themselves a new look, a new logo, new all that stuff, got away from the Bob- Bobcats, and uh, came back. They're a little bit better. But as I said, they're still the 10th seed in the Eastern Conference. They're in the bottom two-thirds of their conference. That's not all that great. Because Michael Jordan is the owner of the team, there's a special kind of pull to the Charlotte team. I mean, just for example, Tony Parker was traded from the San Antonio Spurs, a longtime Spur. I think he was there almost his entire career, to go play with the Hornets because he knows Michael Jordan's the owner and he can play for his idol. I mean, if I looked up to Michael Jordan when I was younger, Tony Parker really looked up to the guy. I mean, they're not quite close in age. They're like 10 years apart. Uh, but Tony Parker probably got to play with Michael Jordan at some point earlier on in his career. So um, pretty cool for Tony. The Charlotte Hornets were 36 and 46 last year. That's actually not terrible. Uh, 20, well, it is bad enough, you know, to not make the playoffs. 22 and 30 in conference play, 21 and 20 at home. So the first team that broke even at home and then 15 and 26 on the road. You can see we're starting to step it up. When we get to the playoff teams, we're going to have a lot more stuff to cover. So let's start rattling off some of these players from last year's roster. They had not very many players come through their franchise last year. Uh, Only 17. We've been seeing a lot of 21, 22, 20, but 17. That's actually pretty significant. Just to name some of them, Dwayne Bacon, Nicholas Batum, Michael Carter-Williams, Trevion Graham, Willie Hernan Gomez, Dwight Howard, Frank Kaminsky, Michael Kidd-Gilchrist. Oh, boy, let me redo that one. Michael (laughs) Kidd-Gilchrist, not Michael Grill Kid. Oh, my goodness. Jeremy Lamb, Mangok Mathiang, Malik Monk, Johnny O'Brien, Marcus Page, Julian Stone, Kemba Walker. That's a guy to look out for. Marvin Williams and Cody Zeller. The fact they only had 17 players on their roster throughout the entire year last year and still had a record of 36-46, you know, kind of inching towards that even mark, I'm actually kind of impressed. But they do have a pretty good lineup. I mean, Dwight Howard, Frank Kaminsky. Dwight Howard's obviously, they say he's a future Hall of Famer. Some people do, but I don't know, man. I mean, he's he's dominant. He kind of has changed the game a little bit because he's such a big dude, but... Not quite like a Shaq. Like, he hasn't been that dominant. Uh, Frank Kaminsky, guy who came in out of University of Wisconsin, was uh, really big in college, can shoot threes. Um, he kind of fell off in the NBA a little bit, but he's still around and, and he's producing for this team. He's a seven-footer, uh, similar size to Cody Zeller. Michael Carter-Williams is a guy who came out of college with a lot of hype, uh, really quick point guard, 6'6", six, six, kind of bigger for a point guard. But also Malik Monk. Kemba Walker, though, he's their starting point guard at 6'1". He's really fast and athletic. He can dunk, he can shoot, pull up, fade away, whatever it is. He's also good at getting steals and just running on a fast break and scoring quick points on you. So those kind of intangibles where you just get in the way of passes and you can make breaks for your guys down the court, that's really big. Uh, It turns into a lot better team chemistry and productivity down the stretch. Probably where a lot of their productivity came from is just quickness on defense to offense. If we take a look at their team totals from last year, Their top scorer was by far Kemba Walker with 1770, and then you had Dwight Howard at 1340, 
and then Jeremy Lamb at 1,000. So this is the first team that we've seen, from what I recall, in the Eastern Conference that had two players with more than 1,000 points, or as close. I think the Knicks had Ennis Cantor and Chris Stapps, but these guys have three. Okay, so that, that tells you how much of a jump up that would make for a team like this. Uh, but it still stays strong, like 870 for Frank Kaminsky, 740 for Marvin Williams, 740 for Nick Batum, 680 for Michael Kidd, Grill, Kidd, Kidd Gilchrist. I cannot say that name, apparently. And Malik Monk even had 420, and then after that it kind of drops off. So their guys were very productive for having smaller amount of players on the court throughout the year. So very interesting breakdown there for the the Charlotte Hornets. Let's take a look at who they have coming back. I'm actually really excited to see how they might perform based on that fact. According to the latest look that I did, Nicholas Batum will be returning. Bismack Bayombo is going to be there. He's an athletic shot blocking center. And then you have Frank Kaminsky coming back for his fourth year out of Wisconsin, known for his dominant college play, ability to shoot threes. And then you've got Michael Kidd Gilchrist, got it right that time, coming back. Jeremy Lamb will be returning. Uh, He's also kind of splitting some minutes with another shooting guard by the name of Malik Monk. Two two guys that are kind of in the same boat. They provided a lot of points for their team, though, so you can't can't really fault him for that. But then you have a guy named Tony Parker coming in who will provide all kinds of veteran leadership. If not that, he's just going to be hanging out with Mike all the time. Uh, but this guy, he was injured late in his career with like two two years ago, I think. Had he's had some back troubles and things like that. He was traded to the Hornets and he's going to get going to get to play for his guy Michael Jordan. Uh, the trade came after Manu Ginobili announced his retirement, uh, bringing a really dominant Spurs team to an end in Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker. So that will be a big addition to that team. I don't, he's not going to be one of their top scorers, but I think he's going to provide a lot of leadership and a lot of um, coordination on offense to help get the ball in the right guy's hands at the right times. You know, And, and maybe if he can poke a steal out, Kemba Walker can get out on a fast break and, and help that along as well. That does it for this episode of the All Ball Show presented by Abstract Sports, where we bring sports back to life. Let us know how you think the Charlotte Hornets are going to do in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button so you can get NBA slash basketball content all season long. I'm your host, Kyle Clay 2K. I'll see you in the next one.